Were you born on a cusp? Now, this topic has different beliefs and depending on your um, astrology kind of makeup and who you are. And um, I personally, I like the idea of cusps, but there are reasons why some astrologers do not. So firstly, I'm just going to put out this disclaimer. If you're born on a cusp, which is about a five day period between one sign and the next, it's when the sign changes, when the sun moves from one sign to the next. Many people have said that maybe you take on a little bit of both signs. Um, especially if you're born in the zero degree, which would be the first day or the very last degree, the 29th or zero degree. So the, you're born within that transitionary time. One reason why people say it's not true is because the sun is never really in both signs at the same time. It just goes from 29 right into zero and then that's it. So many astrologers will tell you there's no such thing as cusps and uh, you don't have both things. So if you're feeling like you're both things, it's probably something else in your chart, which makes sense. But this is just for fun. Just watch the video. See if you think that you have a little bit of both. And so this won't be for everyone, but this will be for those born on a cusp. Or if you have, maybe it would be fun too to look at your birth chart and see any planet that maybe is in the 29th or zero degree of a sign and see if you feel uh, you take on both signs in that area, whichever house that would be in. So that's the disclaimer. This will not be for everyone. This is for fun. See if it makes sense for you. I like the idea of cusps. I think it's cool. And I was born on a cusp. I was born on the first day of Pisces. So there was actually a time when I was younger where I was told I was an Aquarius. And then uh, it shifted. And so then I was a Pisces. Anyways, I tend to think I have both. And this is just an example. I tend to think I have both Pisces and Aquarius, but also my seventh house is Aquarius, um, which affects long-term relationships. So that's a huge area of my life, which is affected by Aquarian energy. And also I have Mercury in Aquarius. So the way that I think and the way that I communicate, kind of like an Aquarian. So that's what I mean by many astrologers will say cusps is no, it's not real, that's not a thing, you can't be born on a cusp, <laughs> it's just one or the other. But I'm going to go over these and just feel it out, just see how you feel about it, okay? So we're going to start with the Aries Taurus cusp, so if you were born between April 16th to about the 22nd, you would be considered born on the cusp. This cusp is called the cusp of power. So, an Aries takes initiative. They can sometimes be self-centered, but they're also competitive and fiery and passionate and they take action. Whereas Taurus, would be a slower energy, a more logical, let's take it slow, let's get there eventually, they're more hardworking, and they're more materially focused. Instead of how Aries would be more focused on the ego or themselves, Aries represents the self, Taurus would be more about your working effort towards material things. So they like very physical things, clothing, food is important to Taurus, sex is important to Taurus. Not just any clothes, like name brand, nice stuff, okay? High quality things, Taurus likes that. So Taurus can also be very stubborn. 
Taurus would be a more steady version of Aries who is, puts in a lot of effort. I didn't really realize how much it makes sense for Aries and Taurus in combination would be very powerful because they're willing to take action and they're willing to put in the effort. Taurus will work hard at something steady and slow as it may be or whatever for material gain. Aries likes doing things that would promote themselves or move themselves higher up but that's you know maybe a less evolved Aries but they do like to motivate others and they just like to get stuff done so that would be a great cusp that's a good thing to be uh, if it doesn't sound like you and you sound just more like an Aries or just no I'm just more of a Taurus then forget the cusp idea okay this is just a fun video and also check your birth chart because maybe you have a lot of placements in Taurus or Aries or whatever and then you can think about maybe it's Venus in Taurus maybe so maybe in love you feel like that but not every way okay let's move on to Taurus and Gemini cusp so this would be if you were born between May 17th and the 23rd this cusp is called the cusp of energy so Taurus being the slower but hardworking and more materially focused more earth plane focused in combination with Gemini who's very intellectual who likes to see things from multiple perspectives and is highly stimulated I mean mentally too but physically Taurus would would bring this about in a more physical way so it doesn't mean that that they will always be in combination or work together it may mean in some instances you're more like a Gemini in some instances you're more like a Taurus and so it's very important that you look at this video with a broad view so you can see the, the ways that you're a little bit of this and a little bit of that and if it doesn't make sense then it doesn't make sense but if it makes sense then you should check out your birth chart and see if you have maybe Gemini somewhere else in your chart with a prominent planet um, or Taurus vice versa so you could see how you would be more like a Gemini or more like a Taurus depending on the circumstance the Gemini Cancer cusp would be from June 17th through the 23rd and this is called the cusp of magic because you're moving from Gemini who is very intellectual very um, needs to be stimulated all the time they like to talk a lot and um, always expressing new ideas researching things they're kind of like a visionary and how they could they could see it maybe they don't know how to get there um, or like Kanye West as a Gemini and if you ever have seen his interviews he'll just be talking all over the place in his mind they connect and you can see how they connect but their minds just jump all over the place they have to constantly be stimulated they get bored very easily they need variety in relationships the Gemini um, is termed one of the bachelor or bachelorette signs of the zodiac so they get bored with people too and they may uh, have some infidelity issues I don't know I'm just saying then so then we mix that or blend that or somehow get a little bit of cancer in there cancer is more spiritual and more psychic and because they're a water sign cancer um, cares about the family as in they may be the matriarch or patriarch figure maybe not in real life but they feel like the mom or dad or they have to take care of everyone or their friends or you know like there's always a mom in the group and so cancer would be the one who nurtures and cares those are or cares about those around them and so that's why there's this influence of magic because the spiritual nature of cancer the psychic ability of cancer mixed with the intellect and 
the uh, constant yearning for new knowledge of Gemini creates this magic where you could really manifest anything if you were born on this cusp. So the next cusp would be the Cancer Leo cusp. And this is called the, um, the oscillation cusp. So when you mix Cancer, this sensitive, spiritual, kind of open bleeding heart, not as bad as Scorpio, but they care a lot and they, they care about how people see them a lot. So when you mix that with Leo, who doesn't really give a shit about what anybody thinks about them, who is very open and blunt and will just say how they feel, they too have an open heart. This is a very generous sign, Leo, but sometimes they come off a little bit like Aries as a fire sign where they're kind of want to be center of attention. Cancer also has a way of of needing to do things for others but really it's for them like they want to be the mom and take care of everyone not just because they love them but also because it makes them look a certain way oh they're always taking care of everyone oh they're the, they're the best they did it so there's a way that cancer gives to others that also is like what's in it for me okay that's just my experience so a cancer leo cusp will kind of exaggerate that, I feel. It may be harder with these people to see others' point of views because maybe they are more internally focused or self-absorbed. And that's not always the case, but it is a good placement um, if you're born on this cusp because you will see the value of the passion you put in, of having an open heart um, and leadership is huge for Leo too, mixed with the spiritual and psychic ability, the sensitivity and the empathy that Cancer carries. That would um, really be a more evolved version of this cusp and that could really could really go far um, in changing the people around you, changing lives, changing the world, just really being helpful and loving in general. So the next one is the Leo Virgo cusp. So this would be from the 19th of August to the 25th of August. And um, this cusp is called the cusp of exposure. So Leo being very open um, and Virgo, Virgo can be kind of shy. Virgo is the observer. Virgo will kind of sit back and just watch how things play out. And then they'll speak up if they feel the need. Many times Virgo already knows the best way to do things. Um, but they just want to let other people talk. And then they'll be like, okay, now let's get down to business because this is actually the best way to do it. And most times they're right. So listen to Virgo because they're the best. And also, <laughs> that, I'm not, that's not true. But anyways, <laughs> every sign is the best. So Virgo mixed with Leo in this sense is powerful, is caring, but also is able to observe and look at the finer details. They will be more caring in relationships than just a regular Leo because they can see and understand where you're coming from. And even if they don't get that that's where you're coming from, they can see from your perspective and they can observe and they'll always just kind of know what you need or want. You know, um, you may need to tell them a few times if they're more in their Leo energy. But when they're in their Virgo energy, they'll be very helpful they um, do like acts of service. Virgo will help clean. Virgo likes clean, <laughs> cleaning, decluttering, um, and organizing. And then Leo just kind of wants to help and be uh, just loving and there for the people that they love as long as you're giving it back in return. Leo has a great open heart and they're just this big lion, but they need to 
feel it back in return. And Virgo does as well because they can be very insecure emotionally. Virgo has to have a backup plan. They have to have a plan in place. And if it doesn't go just to plan, they will feel very insecure um, because they have a hard time trusting. So if you are dating someone or if you know someone who is a Leo Virgo cusp, they may need more reassurance than others. They may need to know that you love and care about them all the time. Just because they want to give you that energy, they need it back in return to know that they're not being played, they're not being taken advantage of, and just to make things go smoother. Okay, the next cusp is the Virgo Libra cusp. This is called the cusp of beauty. And this would be if you were born from September 19th to the 25th. So this would be the same aspect of Virgo who is very detail oriented, who has many long-term goals, who can be very overly critical, who overanalyzes things, um, possibly judgmental, but this is all good and bad of Virgo. The, you could see these both ways. These are really good qualities to have with someone who is a very hard worker, who cares about money in the sense that they need that personal security, and they care about the small details because it matters how it comes together. Is it going according to plan? It's very important to Virgo. So when we mix that with Libra, who's kind of just up in the air about things, they need stimulation like Gemini. They're an air sign. They need mental stimulation, but also beauty. Beauty is so important to Libra. Art, music, anything that lights them up. For some of them, maybe it's nature. For some of them, maybe it's a computer program. Um, it could literally be anything because Libra finds beauty in anything. They're flirty. They, uh, they find attractiveness pretty much anywhere. Just like they can find beauty in everything. So that's why they're flirty. They like attention. Libra likes to be center of attention, similar to Leo, but Libra is more likely to sway and be a people pleaser. So having that with Virgo, who is way more uptight, uh, this could actually be a pretty good combination if you stick with um, the Virgo side in getting things done because Libra can kind of just throw caution to the wind and just go with the flow of things and maybe procrastinate or become lazy. Um, they lose stuff a lot. They're misplacing their keys or whatever um, because their head is just kind of thinking of other things. <laughs> so they can lose focus easily. Like, hey, snap out of it, Libra. Back to reality. And I think that having a Virgo cusp, if you will, or even Virgo in your chart will really help you have some type of a firm grounding because Libra kind of reaches for the stars in ways that like some Libra would do anything or say anything to be popular or to meet someone famous or to become famous. Fame and how they're seen by the world is important. At the same time, Libra also has the sense of justice and the sense of societal obligation that things have to be fair and just and right. So I think that too with Virgo would be really powerful and could transform things. I mean, that they would make great lawyers, they would make a good judge, um, someone who has a broader sense of how the small details come together to help society or humanity as a whole in a beautiful way. That's the cusp of Virgo Libra. Okay, next would be the Libra Scorpio cusp, which is termed the cusp of drama. Okay, so that would be from October 19th through the 25th. If you or someone you know was born within this time, then you may recognize these signs within them or you. So Libra is this 
sometimes people pleasers, sometimes cares too much about what others think, but deep down they just like to be stimulated. They like change, they like variety, they like to see things from this perspective, and then they can see it from this perspective. So it kind of makes them seem wishy-washy just because they kind of see things from, from both sides. Similar to Gemini, how it's easy because they're air signs, they're very mental, to kind of think about how someone else might feel. Not really empathetic, they're definitely detached emotionally. All air signs are. So they would be detached in that sense, dependent on that placement, if it's the sun or the moon or whatever. Specifically the moon, they'll be really detached emotionally. But that's off topic. Libra can see things from their perspective. They can see how they feel. But it may be difficult emotionally, empathetically, to understand how someone else feels. They might say things like, I can see how you would feel that. But they don't have that emotional draw, that sense of like, wow, I could really put myself in your shoes and see how you feel emotionally. It's just more like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, the beauty thing, you know, Libra loves beauty. Very flirty. Libra, it has a draw to infidelity, the same as Gemini. I mean, all signs can cheat, but these are just signs known for infidelity, okay? Because they like to be center of attention, if someone gives them attention, they will just be flirting with that person all night. If someone else tries to give them attention, yes. Anything new, any new stimulation or variety, especially mental stimulation, is great for all air signs. So mixing this with Scorpio, which is water, which is purely emotion, extremely sensitive, very highly sexual, this placement would be very caring about justice, very flirty, very loving of humanity period and others, and beauty and art, but have a very deeper, darker, maybe even occult since these are people who can get involved in uh, more conspiracy minded things um, deep deep into whatever they're into if it's religion they're going deep they're going down the rabbit hole they want to know everything about it they research everything Scorpio are incredible investigators they can be vengeful they can be um, spiteful they can get a little bit crazy but it's because their emotions get them so wound up you know and then mixing that with Libra I really want to know if you're a Libra Scorpio cusp let me know in the comments how do you feel what aspects of both uh, do you feel you have because my son is actually born on this cusp and it is it is dramatic it is like a little bit extreme which is scorpio it is like very sensitive maybe maybe crying over spilt milk sometimes maybe taking things a little bit too personally sometimes getting defensive but also it's about being happy and having fun and that libra social they want to be around people all the time and and they want to be stimulated Maybe they uh, are and, and attracted. They want to feel attracted to things. It has to be visually stimulating, like artwork, you know, beauty. But it also needs to be, in order to keep a Libra period, it has to be deeper stimulation. They do like things at face value, but anyone will flirt with a Libra, you know? And so they can find that in anyone. To keep a Libra, you have to be more deeper. So especially with a Scorpio cusp, they love deep emotional connection, intimacy, and they may not be good at it at first, but it is very important to who they are, and that's why sex is very important to Scorpio too. So that would be that cusp. I don't want to get too much further into it because we could just go all day on these cusps, but 
This next one is Scorpio Sagittarius cusp. So this is termed the cusp of revolution. And I can see why it's called that. And this would be if you were born on November 18th to the 24th. So Scorpio does have this sense of rebirth and transformation. And that's why they say like if you sleep with a Scorpio, like it's the most powerful sexual experience you've ever had. You know, they are very sexual, but it's meaningful. It's deeper. It's about intimacy and power. A lot of Scorpios draw their power from sexual experiences and intimacy. So for some of them, it's a very spiritual experience as well. Not so much as Pisces, but it's up there. And it's highly emotional. Maybe your Scorpio will cry at the end of sex. You know, maybe they'll have a physical healing or something. It means so much to them. So when you blend that with Sagittarius, who is competitive, who is another one of those signs that is more likely to be an infidel, they are the other bachelor energy of the zodiac. They like to party. They like the social scene, similar to Libra. Um, but they are more fiery. They are more competitive, sporty, athletic. They care about the future in the sense of they are sort of a visionary where they search for meaning, but it's about truth. It's always about the search for truth, and sometimes that truth can change for Sagittarius. So depending on what they just learned or what they're getting into, that will change. And they like to gossip and uh, they like to be in the know on things. They talk a lot, sometimes they talk really fast. They like to be center of attention. Most fire signs do, I think. Um, or they're like in their best energy when they're the center of attention. They have a great sense of humor and they really like sex a lot too, in a more adventurous sense. They're very spontaneous they just like to have fun and sometimes it gets to where they just like to have so much fun that they're not obligated to anybody and they don't like to commit to things and they like to be their own boss so if you are a Scorpio Sagittarian cusp you would be hypersexual adventurous you're not telling me nothing you can't tell me what to do <laughs> and uh, a deeper sense though, a deeper emotional understanding and more sensitive maybe, maybe more so behind closed doors or when you choose to show that because Sagittarius is more like, mm, no, I'm here for the fun and they really try to pretend that nothing bothers them or nothing hurts them and um, unless they get pissed and they could say some really harsh things, really blunt things. And that goes for Gemini, too. They have a lot of similar traits, Sagittarius and Gemini, even though they're exact opposites on the zodiac spectrum. Okay, so yeah, revolution, because Scorpio brings change and Sagittarius has this need, this search for truth. It could really bring so many, I mean, constant revolution, constant change, constant bettering of yourself, finding more freedom, Sagittarius loves freedom, through a deeper understanding and more spiritual or sensitive emotional meaning. And maybe they care too much about themselves, Sagittarius. But Scorpio, Scorpio can be very loving. They give, they give a lot emotionally. And so if they're not getting that back, that's when they turn into a more spiteful, vengeful, I'm going to get you back. Because they can be very defensive. They can take things really personally. And I find it hard for Scorpio, even though they're very emotional and sensitive, it's like they're very emotional and sensitive. They can't always put themselves in someone else's shoes. They can't always understand how you're feeling. So it may just take extra explaining or communication in that sense. Okay. The next one would be Sagittarius Capricorn Cusp. 
This is called the Cusp of Prophecy, and this is from December 18th to the 24th. If you were born during those days, you would be considered on the cusp of Sagittarius and Capricorn. So, everything I just mentioned about Sagittarius, the fun-loving, outspoken, sometimes harsh or blunt, uh, doesn't like to be obligated, really loves freedom, loves anything adventurous, anything new. They're the type that will like jump out of a plane, um, go hiking, anything athletic. They are fiery and passionate. They are hypersexual. Um, we're going to be mixing that with the Capricorn who is very hardworking, very logical, very down to earth. And they plan things like Virgo. But it's more about the broader spectrum, the, the broader vision, whereas Virgo would be more like uh, very small details. How do we get there? Capricorn doesn't care as long as they get there. They're about drive, ambition, and they're like the workhorse, okay? Similar to Taurus, but Capricorn is more about no excuses, you just do it. And they're very down to earth. They wouldn't be into any kind of spiritual stuff, not really, unless they have more water signs in their chart. Um, but Sagittarius may be. Sagittarius may be more drawn to traditional religion, but Sagittarius with Capricorn would be fierce. I mean, that that's a force to reckon with. If you get the negative things under control and you're more towards the positive of both signs. You would be extremely hardworking, you'd probably make great money, you'd be really outgoing and adventurous and have great charisma. People would really uh, love and highly respect you and you'd have so many good jokes. Just very humorous. I would like to see that because Capricorn may have a more dry sense of humor. Um, in comparison to Sagittarius, which is just more boisterous and loud and funny. Uh, and they may say things that other people wouldn't. Like, I can't believe you just said that. Like, what? You can't say those things. Well, I would say it. It's like, no. <laughs> That's Sagittarius. They'll say the things that no one else will. So mix that with Capricorn, who is more proper and more really just there's a right way to do it and that's the way you do it and Capricorn are just so amazing in how they get things done I mean they really just get it done if you want something done give it to a Capricorn or a Virgo the earth signs they just they snap into this mode where they're just like okay I got it I know what to do and then they do it and that's it so these are great people to have in your lives, this cusp in particular, because they know when to have fun, they know when to work. Let me know if you are this cusp in the comments. I want to know how this plays out for you. Okay, the next one would be Capricorn Aquarius cusp. So this is the cusp of mystery. So January 16th, to the 23rd would be the dates for this cusp. So we have these aspects of hard working, getting things done, very logical, very by the book of Capricorn, mixed with this Aquarian freedom loving, open minded, humanitarian energy. Now keep in mind that Capricorn loves commitment. It makes them feel safe makes them feel secure and they need that. That's why they are so materially focused because having that sort of success makes them feel secure. So when you mix that with certain aspects of Aquarius who like other air signs kind of up in their headspace a lot um, this would be great because they would get more of a logical sense from Capricorn and maybe more hard-working sense because Aquarius can sometimes be lazy, they can sometimes be pessimistic and so 
I think that would really help you if you were born on this cusp because Capricorn can kind of help balance that out. And in the ways that, that Capricorn is too harsh or hard on themselves or this is the only way to do it, the Aquarius nature would be like, actually, there's all these other ways we can do it. And they're very creative and they are artistic and they can come up with different solutions. They're also very technologically focused. Aquarius like movies, computers, video games, any new technology, phones, TVs, they're obsessed. Anytime something new comes out, maybe they have to buy it. They are geared towards technology because of Uranus. Um, is the planet that rules Aquarius. So, there is a sense of mystery, I think, because Aquarius, it's like you never know. You think you know, but you don't really know what they're thinking all the time. You know, and there is a sense of mystery and how it all comes together, too, because they're both really different signs. But if you're born on a cusp, Hopefully you would have the good things from both. You probably would have the bad things from both. Where Capricorn can be a little too controlling. They can be overbearing, demanding. And Aquarius can be that pessimistic, negatively focused worriers. They stress a lot if things don't go their way. So as much as they're open-minded, sometimes it's hard for them to keep the faith. Whereas Capricorn, it's just like, they just do it, they work hard, they get it done, and their faith really just lies in their own abilities. So, that's a cool cusp to have, or to be born under. Okay, so the next one would be Aquarius and Pisces, and this is called the cusp of sensitivity. And that makes sense, because Pisces is the most sensitive, the most spiritual, the most dreamy, sign that there is. So when we mix it with the Aquarius creative, artistic, um, air sign, this is humanitarian, philanthropist, what's best for everyone, what's fair for everyone, those things that Aquarius cares about mixed with Pisces, which is known for being very wise, very spiritual, um, having great understanding and empathy for others. We could see how that would come together in a way that would help humanity and probably feel very geared towards that as in like a life purpose or calling to help humanity and what am I contributing and what have I done to help humanity up until this point. Pisces are extremely psychic. They can be lazy. They can be the martyrs. Um, and always sacrificing themselves or self-sabotaging as well. So the Aquarian is good because they can detach emotionally and see things from a humanitarian or larger perspective. Pisces has a hard time detaching emotionally and they're extremely sensitive. So they both can play in and feed each other by way of sensitivity whether you choose as the Aquarian side to look at things on, on a broader perspective. Sometimes they have a hard time viewing how it's all going to come together, but they just can see what's fair, what's best for everyone involved. They may not know the steps to get there, but they are a visionary in that sense. So with Pisces being very loving, caring, generous, um, but also lazy, and sometimes distracted, and sometimes procrastinating. Uh, this sign, this cusp, may need a boost every now and then of motivation or meaning. If it's not meaningful, especially if it's not creative or artistic or gets those juices flowing, eh, kind of don't want to, you know? So there's that one. <laughs> that would be from February 15th to the 21st. And then the next cusp we have is the Pisces-Aries cusp. 
And this is known as the cusp of rebirth. So this would be if you were born between March 17th to the 23rd. And so we have all these Pisces, um, very wise, very spiritual, very psychic, very open and understanding and empathetic, sometimes lazy, sometimes uh, substance abuse type things because they feel everything and they're very sensitive so sometimes they just want to escape. That's a, that's a bad trait of Pisces. They're escapists. And so are Sagittarius, by the way. Anyways, Aries, Pisces and Aries is this sense of rebirth and actually if you look into reincarnation and in the birth chart many astrologers believe if you are born on this cusp that this will be your last human life if you are born from the cusp of Pisces into Aries because or if you're born on the 29th degree or 28th degree of Pisces if you're born on the last day of Pisces they say this may be your last human life because you've completed the cycle if we think about you come in as an Aries which may not always be the case you may come in as a higher evolved being. I don't know what your life is, but this cusp can represent rebirth in the sense of starting over. Pisces is the oldest sign. They're the most wise, spiritual, uh, and understanding sign. Aries is the baby. Aries is focused on taking action, getting things done, uh, starting businesses, and then they like to leave. They like to be CEO and just like delegate and tell other people what to do. They have this idea and they can implement it, but then they want other people to come in and like fulfill the everyday challenges, like the managerial staff and all that. They don't really want to deal with that. They just like to take action. They like to be the initiators, which makes them great CEOs and really good motivational speakers if they can get themselves out of the way because Aries represents the self, it is the ego, it is about growing and how you can help others in the end based on who you've become and pulling yourself out of it so that you're not entirely ego based but, but willing to help others and willing to do it for the team, you know, instead of just me. So when we look at this connection between Pisces and Aries, you may find someone who's very spiritual and psychic, but also very action-oriented. They may be a busybody. They may be uh, physically involved in things or like to work out or like to do hard labor or work with their hands. Aries is very much about passion. And so they would be very passionate, fiery, spunky, feisty. But they have this underlying nature, most likely, of Pisces. This understanding of others and empathy. Sometimes they may self-sabotage. Sometimes they may be the martyr and sacrifice themselves for everyone else or put everyone else first. And hopefully with this cusp, you wouldn't because Aries would put a stop to that immediately and be like, no, no, no. No more excuses. You're going to do this. You're not sacrificing yourself for anybody else. And this cusp is great. It's a great balancing act. It's great for knowing the bigger picture and knowing who you are. And it's great for taking action and being passionate and caring. And then mixing that with the artistic and open-minded view, the empathy and sensitivity of Pisces, and the spiritual nature, which would combine with this fiery Aries of getting things done in the real world in a spiritual and sensitive manner. So that's it for the cusps. Look into this more. See how you feel about it. I'm not saying you have to believe in cusps. Many astrologers don't. But I think it's fun and I think it's good if you look at your birth chart and see where these signs are, which houses, which planets. Get into it. Learn more about yourself. Why wouldn't you want to? And if you need help with that, you could always email me 
for reading or a birth chart interpretation and that is so fun it's one of the my favorite things to do and life purpose readings I love to do so as well as if you had uh, questions about compatibility or sinistry if you have someone in your life it could be a child a mother it could be a best friend it could be a lover um, or your boss if you have the information on them birth time city date uh, and you want to get a reading on that let me know please comment below if you like this video please like and share and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one